These virgins call Jesus Lord, Lord open to us. What does that mean? It means that they have a relationship somewhat to God, to Jesus. Lord, Lord open to us. It is not sufficient to say, oh, these were never saved. They never believed God. That's not true. They were waiting for the coming of Jesus. Do you remember that? They are all 10 were waiting. But five were foolish, five were smart. Five didn't have enough oil. Many Bible scholars compare that to the Holy Spirit. They're not spending their time with God, seeking the Lord, replenishing the, um, the, the lamp with oil, and getting extra. This is the time you need to seek the Holy Spirit. Because when we look around, no, like many people are not going to agree with what we think that Jesus is coming. They're like, well, let's just enjoy life. Why there's so many rules in Christianity? Why can't you do this? Why can't I just do what feels good? Why can't I just look at what I like to look at? Why can't I just play what I like to play um, and, and you know, sing and watch whatever I like? Why can't I just do that? Because it feels good. This is our culture, right? If it feels good, then just go do it. But that goes contrary to what the Bible says. Don't go and do what feels good because your flesh goes wars against your spirit. Many times what we want to do, when we want to yell back at the other person, when we want to uh, get even, you know, or do things that we know we shouldn't do, it is only through the Holy Spirit that we can kill the flesh and mortify the deeds of the flesh. And so, yeah, bookseller, I'm glad you're asking how Marinana is doing. Um, and the last stream, on, on these live streams, at the end, we pray for one another. If you need a prayer, a, a, a prayer, Stay until the end. We're going to pray for you and want to find out how Marinana is doing because we're a church here online. We're growing this community. This community, I pray, is one that looks for the coming of Jesus with the right attitude because surely he is coming soon and we don't want to miss when he comes. And so I want to talk about Matthew chapter 25. It's very important to know that it says, Lord, Lord, open to us. But Jesus says, I never knew them. And so the first thing from this parable we have to recognize to prepare for the coming of Jesus Number one in this parable, Jesus warns us that we have to watch. Therefore, for we do not know the day or the hour in which the son of the man is coming. Now, if you're on this video and you know, you're loving the Lord, you and I most likely we're looking for the coming of Jesus. So we're kind of quote unquote good on that end. Jesus, we want you to come. But again, as I said, we don't want to be rapture dreams chaser. We don't want to be going on YouTube every day. Oh, is there another dream? Is there another dream about Jesus coming? No. We want to be on our knees, seeking the face of God, reading His word, praying, and saying, God, what is it that I can do? Because this is the second parable in Matthew chapter 25 that Jesus gave after He says um, when end times is going to be. We want to pay attention to how we keep our lives. Bookseller says, little hiccups in life, but grateful. Thank you. Hope you're changing the struggles of living. We all have things that we deal with in our own lives, Bookseller. That's true. Um, but the, by the grace of God, we can. With discipline and with the word of God, we can. Bookseller says, when I was younger, I was afraid of the end times. Now I'm looking forward to it. That's right. Because the good news of Jesus Christ is that he saves us from sin and he allows us to... He allows us to walk a new life in Him. And so, in Matthew chapter 25, is the parable of the talents. Parable of the talents. Now, the first attitude we should have is look for for the coming of Jesus. We know that already. And number two, this is very important, okay? Because if we're looking for the coming of Jesus, and now, now when you're looking at it, you're like, well, why would Jesus put these parables in such an order? He tells, he first in Matthew 24, he says, these are the signs of my coming. Then in Matthew 25, the first parable, he says, well, there are five foolish virgins and five wise. Five were looking, five weren't really looking. Five were wise, five weren't wise. Five had oil, five didn't. Now, this is the second parable of the talents. Listen to this. Jesus says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one, he gave five talents, to another two, and another one each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them, made another five. And the one who had two gained another two. And the one who had one dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. There will be a day that Jesus will settle accounts with everyone on earth. 
That's the data we're looking for. But are we ready? Are we really ready? He who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents besides them. So his Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. A very famous phrase we hear in the Christian circle, which is true. We want Jesus to tell us, well done, good and faithful servant. He'll call us, well done, good and faithful child or, or a son or daughter. Because we've been adopted into his family through Jesus Christ. You were faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He who also had two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me um, two talents. Look, I gained two more. Wouldn't you be happy if you give someone something uh, and, and you're like, hey, do something with it? And, and they do. But first is someone that you gave them something and they didn't do anything with it. Bloom Dupree, I, I can't look at your profile right now, but there's no coincidence. I'm sure the Holy Spirit is giving you confirmation on the word today. Um, I'll, I'll check, maybe I'll check it out later, but I'm sure it's about, you know, end times and things like that. That's how God speaks to us as a body um, through his word, through just um, how he speaks to us on that day. This is why we're looking into this because it's important. Because it says here in, in verse 24, he who had one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was not, and I was afraid and went and hit your talent in the ground. Look, I'll just give back that talent that you gave me. I'll just give it back to you. I didn't do anything with it. But what does the Lord say? He answered and said, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to. You ought to, remember this, you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has more will be given and he will have an abundance, more will be given to him and he who does not have even what he has will be taken from him and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth that is talking about hell hellfire over and over again when jesus says do not fear him who can kill the body and do nothing else that's the devil but fear him who can kill the body and send the body cast the body into hell where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth where the worms will not die and so jesus says that unprofitable servant who took the talent hit it he will be cast out into outer darkness into hell where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth I don't know about you, when I hear that, I'm looking into my life. Why is that person sent into everlasting destruction? Because he took the talent that God gave him and he hid it on the ground. So my question to you today is, what talent has God given in your life? If you want, you can put it in the chat. Tell us, what has God put in your heart? What is the word that he's given you at this hour? What is something he's laid on your life in the past maybe weeks or months that you know that it is something that he's given you to do, but you haven't done it yet? Or maybe you're still doing it, which is great. But it is good for us to reflect on this because number one, the first parable Jesus says, we got to look for his coming. But number two, the second parable is Jesus saying, is not enough to look just to look for his coming. We have to do what God has given us with his talent. And so Matt, Jesus says, blessed is he who when his master comes will find so doing. This is why we don't want to just chase after rapture dreams. Because when you chase after rapture dreams, all you think about is when we're going to ra get raptured. When, you know, and by the way, there's different views on this. Some, there's certain um, Christian um, scholars, they don't believe that the different grounds, dispensations, you know, you know, pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip, no trip, you know, or, or you know, we're going to overcome and Jesus is going to come back. Different views. It doesn't even matter because actually it does matter, okay? I, we look for it, but not doesn't matter in this broadcast context. What matters is how we're pre preparing our hearts for the coming of Jesus because if we are just looking for the coming of Jesus and we're not doing, look, if you if you are just sitting there waiting for the rapture, you don't care about what's going to happen. I, how do I know that? Because I was once having a similar attitude about a decade ago. I was just thinking, I'm going to get out of here, you know? 
I'm going to try to, you know, do what God has called me to do, give and, and do certain things. But as of I'm concerned, I'm good and I'm going to get out of here. That's not the answer that that's not the attitude that we want to have. Because number three, the third parable in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus says, he's going to separate the sheep and the goats. Remember in these three parables, number one, look for his coming. Number two, be faithful to the talent that he's given you. Mar Mariner says you're an author, aspiring an author. Yeah, I mean, we all have somewhere to, that we're, we're, we're going. So if the Lord has laid on your heart to be an author, to write for him, then do it. We want to obey God in what he's told us to do. And so Matthew chapter 25, third parable. This is what we need to look at because if we look at Christianity today, we're told that we believe God, accept him, accept him into your heart, and you will go to heaven one day. But if we look at the third, this third parable, it will tell us whether that belief is true. We're, we're rethinking church, re-examining church culture to experience more of God. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, it says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He'll sit on the throne of His glory. One day, everyone will see Him. Even though the day people reject Him, one day, it's going to be that day people will see Him. All the nations will be gathered before Him and will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why? For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. It's a very famous scripture, the least of these scriptures. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer and say, Lord, when have we done all these things to you that when you're hungry, we fed you, when you're, you're thirsty, we gave you a drink and visited you and all that. And the king said to him, which is Jesus, inasmuch as you did it to me, to the one and least of these brethren, you did it to me. Jesus says, there's a mission for us to do well on earth as we're waiting for his coming, as we know that we've been given talents, we have to do his mission, to preach the gospel, to, um, to, to heal the sick, visit the sick, visit those in prison, provide for those who are in need, tell them about the love of God. Are we doing that? Because if we're not, we don't want to be that unprofitable servant. 